Good day. My name is Dr. Peter Harrop. I'm chairman of ID TechX, the analysts. I'm going to share with you some of our new report on what is really something that barely has a name, but is going to be very big, very important. It is energy independent electric vehicles. Some people would call them energy autonomous, uh, but they do not plug in or inductively charge or otherwise gather electricity from outside. They create their own. Uh, so let's go into it. Um, we are involved in events consulting and research. We're a knowledge business all over the world. We had over 10 PhD people and many others and we try to help in these things and see the future. So in seeing the future, the first thing is to look at the past. There are energy independent vehicles. Oh dear, oh dear. They are rather uncontrollable, aren't they? Uh, sailing boats and surfboards and skis and so on. Um, and we would like to have ones that are electrically energy independent so they can provide electricity and be more controllable. And they may be combined with some of these things. They may have sails. Yes, no, nothing wrong in that. So let's move forward on that basis. So if we go to the left here on the black, we see we can take the wind, the sun, the heat, uh, and other things in boats can use the tides, they can use the waves. And we use that so-called free energy, um, convert it into um, mechanical movement with sails and so on, that's the traditional thing, and convert it into electricity, sometimes to help a bit. You have aircraft with have, which have some solar, but it doesn't make them totally independent. Uh, and then over to the right, you have the whole thing, and that is um, at the top right, a mechanical combined with solar cells, um, and at the top mid, in the middle right, uh, aircraft that can sail up into thermals, which is mechanical, but there are three propellers in this case, uh, get um, electricity to fly them sometimes for five years at a time. Um, and that, in that particular new one has solar cells all over it. And these racers that race across Australia, of course, solar cells all over them. Uh, that's only a beginning because there can and will be um, many examples of multiple electrical energy harvesting where you create your electricity many ways and it's more tolerant of one way not working at a particular time. Okay, let's look a bit deeper. On this one, we are looking at the electric energy independent vehicles and some of them you can actually buy today uh, that do not have a battery. That one on the le top left there um, it's, uh, they call it a tourist bus, glorified golf car, but we would call that a lizard electric vehicle because it only works uh, in the daylight and it's uh, much better than you think because without the weight of the battery and the expense of the battery uh, and with it using, in that case, copper, indium, gallium, diselenide, solar cells that are uh, in many respects better, um, and they actually work for a large part of the day. You don't have to have bright sun. And in the case of agricultural vehicles doing boring monitoring of the mold on the grapes and the acidity of the soil and all that, they can trundle along only when there's light. It doesn't matter. And they can be very slow. It doesn't matter. So there is in coming up an enormous lot of autonomous vehicle technology that will involve sometimes lizard electric vehicles and it's more often ones with a battery. Uh, it's a marriage made in heaven, so that's good. And then moving across the top, um, there are micro cars that uh, are being developed that where even the windows generate electricity, transparent uh, photovoltaics, and you've seen the plane on the right. Uh, in the middle over to the right is an example of multiple energy harvesting. This is a design from Monaco of a car-like vehicle that has a lot of solar panels, but it also erects in a windy area uh, a little propeller that generates electricity, a little wind turbine. So that's two sources of electricity. And of course, when they're parked, uh, they can put into a battery a huge amount of electricity. So electrical independence is not that difficult. And we've talked about the boat at the bottom. Uh, that actually, when there's that's going to uh, a British uh, design, MARS, and it's going to cross the Atlantic autonomously, no people. And when there's no wind, the sails come down, and you go at the same speed, just on sunshine or likes to be more precise. New ones coming out all the time. This one's come out this month, and it's. Um, 
one that gives you 70 kilowatts and it's said to be safer in that the generation of the electricity is not by a, a propeller type of design but by a vertical wind turbine that is rotating around the boat and is less dangerous and it generates serious electricity including when it is moored and that would has a battery in that format. Um, so what are the key technologies? Well it's a lot of them and uh, they are going to be appearing in a car and a bus near you just like Formula One brings us uh, things um, that are then generally used like um, kinetic energy recovery system flywheels and um, the disc brake and carbon fiber and they get generally used. This is also a bellwether. These energy independent vehicles are going to be spawning off technology where they already have some 97% efficient electric motors when electric motors are more likely to be 87% efficient. Of course it's an easier duty cycle but the use of twin motors and various other things and much better photovoltaics. Lots of things being pioneered. So the key technologies are Harvesting energy from outside using onboard equipment, uh, creating electricity from outside, um, ambient energy, extreme powertrain efficiency that we've just discussed briefly, some aspects of it, there's more structural electronics and all the rest, brings us to light weighting because making the body of the vehicle into a supercapacitor or an electronic circuit, photovoltaics and all the rest, and the lizard electric vehicles, that's all part of light weighting and extreme aerodynamics in the air and hydrodynamics in the water, there's further to go in streamlining and uh, next generation energy storage with the um, lithium sulfur batteries and the hybrids of batteries and supercapacitors like, like the lithium ion capacitor. Lots of new things coming in and lots of development path. What is uh, not that grand at the moment. I mean some of it is. There are boats that have gone right around the world purely on sunshine. There's a plane that's just going around the world purely on sunshine and there are these military surveillance vehicles, planes and um, airships that will stay up for five, five to ten years autonomously. They are energy independent vehicles and they are impressive and they are very expensive. So there is money in it. But some of the things look clunky but they are a sign of the future. This vehicle in the Netherlands carries four people and has so many solar cells it actually donates energy to the grid in all in addition to doing its job so it's energy positive it's not just energy independent and this is one in Australia based on the solar races it set a record for speed it's purely solar but it is now street legal sign of the times street legal and there are ones being prepared for um, mass production and this one from Cambridge University in the UK has a gallium arsenide panel behind the glass uh, they, and it's uh, tracking the sun as it goes along and um, for the power of a hairdryer you get 85 miles an hour. Very impressive sign of the times. Uh, agricultural vehicles I mentioned and this is one being developed by France, Germany, Italy and Spain but in Australia they've got their own ones as well and these can be lizard electric vehicles or with a battery but they work very slowly they do these boring measurements in agriculture and they have a long development path to come because they're not optimal in many respects yet they are beginning robot vehicles with boats it's very common now to have propellers that um, it would go backwards when you're under sail and generate electricity up to three kilowatts or have little propellers facing forwards look at those on the top right uh, and then they feather and go backwards in a, in a trail um, so they don't have much drag when they're not needed um, and so when it's moored in a tide you can generate electricity from the tide and also when it's under sail so combine a combination of mechanical and electrical and electric jellyfish are now becoming being designed for military and civil use that are um, energy independent and this is a very impressive one because people think well this is the lightweight sort of stuff it's all feeble no it is not all feeble this is an inflatable uh, wing so it's not an airship it is an air airfoil device it's an aeroplane and it's solar and it goes along relatively slowly but it can carry tons of load in Canada that has full funding it's done its initial trials it's looking good and you can inflate it with air if you wish or if you want to get more lift for a really heavy load you inflate it with helium so carrying of heavy 
cargo. So this is a business that is taking off. And literally, uh, these Boeing aircraft will be up for five years doing surveillance. There's one example, a collaboration between the UK and the US, because the UK is developing the ultra lightweight motors, lots of stale state of art stuff. So remember the term high altitude, long endurance, hail planes, H-A-L-E, some of them are airships. And um, that brings me to the end. So these are reports that we have that cover the things I have covered. And uh, we hope we can help you further. Do refer back to us and be excited. This is the new end game for electric vehicles and it is going to be very, very important. I hope you found that useful. Goodbye.